David, last season um, you must have been very disappointed because you, you know there was at one time there a stage where you looked as if you were going to lift the title, wasn't it? Yes, I think we, we were disappointed in the end, but um, looking at you know the objectives for the reserves across the piece, uh, we kept putting players up to the first team. Which yeah, absolutely. Important. And yeah. we brought a lot of good young players through, and we're probably better now to start this season, ha having handed over the reins than we have been for the last two seasons, yeah. in fairness. So, you know, good foundations to build on for this year. Yeah, earlier on, um, Justin and I were talking to Dan Whisker, and we were talking about young Carl, and it's so sad that he got that injury when he did because he really just came into the frame didn't he? Yeah I mean Carl was one of our most promising under 18s uh, in fairness uh, you know, we had three that stood out last year but Carl for me was the best he came from being a regular under 18 player the year before to being really a key player in the reserves and went on the bench for the first team and that's that's one of the key things for us that was what made it really pleasing. Now you're standing alongside uh, well I was going to call him your buddy but he's, he's been around a while now with you so uh, um, but your your role's changing this year David isn't it? Yes it is it's it's um, it, it came out you know really from a, a, an innocuous chat on the changing at uh, uh, the training ground really and um, you know I've I'm committed to the club, I'm a, a Whitstable boy, so for me, um, you know, the opportunity to take a different role than a fresh challenge, I've been doing management for eight years solid, uh, I think the timing was right and what's impressed me from the start with Justin is his ambition and his professionalism and I think the role that I'm going to take on will help you know, bridge the gap and we can be more professional. I can do a lot of work on Justin's behalf, looking at opposition, providing reports, you know, looking at where their weaknesses are so that he can factor that in from his selection, but also as well building that bridge between the first and the reserves. You know, Justin's got a lot on his plate and he can delegate stuff down to me and I can help him and support him in a number of fashions. So I'm really looking forward to the challenge. It's a different role, but you know, one that's going to be really exciting. Well, I know from uh, last year that you had some impact on a couple of our victories last year when you did a bit of scouting, didn't you? So uh, let's, let's hope, hope that yeah, part of that was down was to you. In that little caretaker spell when uh, before the Croydon game, and it was nice to see having watched an opposition and set up, you know, to, to stop their threat and actually exploit their weaknesses. And I thought, well, actually. Um, I realised for the first time at that level how important that is and to be able to provide that service for Justin I think it's going to be key this year and uh, and also I'm still learning, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm always keen to learn and being involved with Justin in the first team setup is a, is a really exciting prospect for me and it was too good a challenge to turn down to be honest. You know, well, Justin, you've, you've um, told me on many occasions how you value, uh, you know, backroom staff, how important it is for you to have these people around you, none more so than, you know, the likes of Dave. Yeah. No, no, that's right. You know, we, Dave said it. You know, we had a, a, a conversation on the training ground, which was pretty much the dot the eyes and cross the T's on the next season and being the reserve team manager. Um, by the end of the conversation, I was making a phone call to Bob <laughs> <laughs> about what he was doing next season. Um, but no, you know, D Dave's been around the game a long time at, at various different levels. He's had a taste of a first team. He, he knows what it, it takes to be a first team manager and and, and the hard work that goes in. Um, and you know, to have, uh, to be honest, on. Out of all the appointments, this is the one that was really key to me more, more than anything because you, you, to have someone there that is going to support you and go and go out to the opposition that he's, he, and provide you with the stats and, and the information that will give you that and give the players, just the players are, are going to benefit more than me here, give them the best opportunity to get three points on a Saturday. You know, Dave's got, it's not just an easy task, this isn't an easy task, no, no. I mean, we're going to have to rely on Dave, and, you know, when when we go and get beat 5-0, because he's told us that, you know, they've got a great left winger, we've, we've sorted that problem out, but they're actually the right one, is the problem, <laughs> then, you know, we've been... <laughs> We might have a few conversations. No, no, no pressure. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. You know, these, these roles are all important. Yeah. And people have to, don't must must remember as well. All these are voluntary roles. Yes. We, um, keep hearing loads of things going around at the moment about money and, and things like that. And these a lot of people do a lot for for, for on volunteer work because they love it. I'm so right? pleased you said that. And you know the, we have a lot of that here um, on and off the pitch. Yes. You know, a lot of stewards and people like that. People that are sitting in the you know, in the ballroom, etc., and, and and you, Tony, and, and everyone, right, at the club, and what's that? 
people seem to forget that, you know, and to have that the ability to have Ian on board, to have Dave on board, but to have two people that are going to look after the club from an outside perspective, you know, um, Dave's more looking at results driven, Ian's looking at structure, but they're both working very alongside each other at the moment, putting stuff together. You know, it, it's fantastic to have. It makes my life easier, yes. and and also what it does is is that it's what it's doing for the chairman and what it's doing for the club is it's building stability. Right now, it's a fact of life. Every manager will get the sack. That's just the way it is. Right, mm. you will always go on bad runs and. Nowadays, it's pretty rare for some chairman to stick with you through thick and thin. Mm-hmm. That's just the way football is, and you know I'll, I'll be here for least hopefully a long time. I, I, that's my, you know, that's what I want to do. Um, but what we're trying to build is stuff where if if I do go, or you know, I get the sack, everything's still there. Yeah. You know, every, everything is still in place. The infrastructure is still there. So the person that comes in, which small town doesn't suffer. I and mean, too many times, you know, a manager leaves a club, the club falls apart. You know, and and that's what we can't do here. We've got to build that stuff. I think that's a very valid point behind the, behind yeah. the scenes, and, and we're doing that. Yeah. You know? And I think now we had a meeting the other night, managers meeting, um, very informal one, just a beer, just to introduce everyone to everyone. And there was a real buzz about it, and the fact that we're all there, we're all, and that doesn't happen enough. You know, yeah. you know, I said at the time, you know, we should be going out and having a beer. The players do it. Why shouldn't we go out? Yeah. Why shoun't we go and enjoy ourselves? What a good because idea. It's it, it's us really that put the hard work in. Yeah. yeah the players get the points. At the yeah. end of the day. But you know they wouldn't have what they have without the likes of us, without the likes of you, without the likes of the people in the ballroom, the people who do the pitch. Um, they wouldn't have any of that, you know, without people doing volunteer work. And um, you know, having Dave and, and, and Ian on board is fantastic for us. And I'm, I'm just delighted that, that Dave's been here. So, so, are so are we. So are we. I mean, there was some horrible rumours going around uh, right at the end of the last season that uh, Dave wouldn't be around. And I know. You know, myself included, we were all gutted with that. But so, but that's the, that's the, that's the thing. It's all yeah. you get. Oh, it's all rumours. Yeah, yeah, it is. Been so many yeah. recently. Dave yeah. was never leaving the club. Yeah. You know, I'd never I had that conversation with Dave. Mm. There was never. I'm uh, glad you buried that because it, it, there's I'm a lot of people. Yeah, it. yeah. You, know, you ask me the questions and I'll bury it. Yeah, because no. there, there's too much going on there with yeah. rumour. Yeah. Um, and maybe we'll have another conversation another time about other stuff. But, yeah. You know, Dave was never leaving this no. club, and and even when we were a little bit apart from where we thought we were, all it was was a little bit lack of communication between the two of us we had a chat for five minutes and it was sorted, it was sorted. And that, that's why I think communication is, is paramount good. between us guys and um, we'll get that right great well we're looking forward to a good season this season so Dave once again brilliant well done yeah we'll be fine thanks, thanks Dave yeah. cheers David cheers. Cheers.